Welcome to the latest in our 15 minute fundamentals series. In today's session, I'm gonna take you through the CRM capabilities of SAP Business One. Now the first thing to realize about SAP Business One is that the CRM functionality is not necessarily broken out into a specific menu area for you unless you're using SAP Business One version 9.3. If you go in into the modules area of SAP Business One and you're on SAP Business One 9.3, you're gonna see here there is a new menu called CRM. And underneath this CRM menu, you'll see all of the different functional areas that uh, compose the CRM functionality inside SAP Business One. But the important point to note, as we uh, talked about in our blog post on CRM functionality is everywhere, is that if you are running an earlier version of SAP Business One, you won't find this CRM menu. But what you will find is all of these functions inside other screens inside SAP Business One. So for example, the sales quotation and sales order. If you come in here into your sales AR screen, there you have it, your sales quotation and sales order. If you are looking for the business partner master information, well, funnily enough, you're gonna find that against your business partners. And you're also going to find the activity information. Other things you're going to find here as well is things like your campaigns and your campaign generation wizards. Also, these things you can find here grouped into the CRM menu. Now, part of the reason why SAP did this in 9.3 was a lot of people didn't realize that that CRM functionality was actually there inside the product. So the designers felt that the best thing to do was really to break it out into its own separate menu. Now, if my memory serves me correctly, I think way back when, um, probably in SAP Business One version 2005, I believe that it used to actually be like that. Um, so it's really, it's a step backwards to move forwards in some respects. Um, so, you know, that's the thing to bear in mind when you're looking for this functionality, be aware that it could be uh, in a different area inside SAP Business One. So first and foremost, with SAP Business One, the main record that you're gonna be working with from a CRM perspective is the business partner master data. Now, if you've been working with SAP Business One for any period of time, you'll know that one of the things that SAP did when they designed the product was they really tried to make it as easy as possible to use. So in the SAP Business partner master data screen, not only will you find your suppliers, but you will also find customers and you will also find prospects. So when you're creating a business partner, you'll see you have this menu option here and it gives you the ability to specify whether the business partner is a customer, a supplier or a lead. Now the good thing about this, of course, is that all of the CRM functionality that we're talking about here, you can use against any one of these three uh, record types, these three business partner master data types. So, yep, you can use it against leads, you can use it with customers, but also you can use it with suppliers. And what that gives you, that actually gives you not only customer relationship management, but it also gives you supplier relationship management. Okay, so anything you can do with a customer you can do with a supplier. So that even things like running campaigns and doing mail outs, tracking all the activities that you do, um, you know, when you're engaging with uh, a supplier, you can do all of that um, with all of these three different kinds of records, customers, suppliers, and leads, which makes SAP Business One pretty powerful in my book. Now, when you're looking at SAP Business One and you're looking at the Business Partner Master screen, you've got all the traditional information that you need from an accounting perspective. You now you've got all the, the accounting information here, you know, what is the GL accounts that it's gonna be posted to. You can come in here and you can see all of your payment terms, um, how you've structured the way that payments should be working with this particular customer. Uh, you can also see all of the addresses and you can see all of the contact people. So it's a seamless blend of all that information in one location, which is the business partner master data. Now, the other thing that you've got in here, which is important, is some other CRM specific functionality. For example, when you're in here in the business partner master data, 
particularly nowadays with um, the general data protection regulation that is coming in uh, to play or has already come into play depending on when you're looking at this video on May the 25th 2018 it's very very important that you have the ability to exclude people from mail outs as well as additional functionality um, that we're going to go through in a separate video specifically about giving people the ability to be forgotten so being able to remove a person's personal details from inside the system but um, you know again this is the kind of thing that you have in your uh, in your traditional CRM applications so you can come in here and you can say well I want to block sending the marketing communications and then you can choose these um, communication media types that you want to block I don't want to send by fax and I don't want to send by email now I'm not sure anybody's still sending out fax campaigns but if you are that capability is there and of course you can get to that simply by clicking on the little button there which is the three dots which is also called an ellipsis so you've got that information you can also create as many different contacts as you want against the the business partner and you can flag those different contacts with a contact ID and that contact ID could be um, buyer could be customer service whatever the person's role is inside the organization um, personally I actually like to use uh, the person's name okay as the contact ID because it makes it nice and easy to find you use their full name okay because one of the other reasons why that's a good idea to do that is you'll see that there isn't actually a field in here in SAP business one that allows you to record the entire full name all right you've got the first name middle name and surname and of course you can concatenate those together when you're generating reports but just having that one field there makes a, a lot of things a lot easier now the only time that can become problematic is you know if you have multiple people with the same first name working for the same company but th that would be highly unlikely and of course you have the ability to put some kind of delineator there um, if you need to but anyway you've got all that information in here the email address their phone number and again you can see the CRM style functionality in SAP business one that maybe sometimes we tend to forget about for example when I hover over a telephone number you'll see the icon turns into a telephone and so what I can do there is I right click on that field it will bring up the phone dialer and if you're using any kind of um, you know computer based telephony system you can link this to that system and have you know those calls going out and just by the same token you can also build that integration so that when calls come into your phone system it does a screen pop and opens up the business partner record so you've got that capability inside SAP business one the email address so you can generate email campaigns and so on so all that traditional information that you would need to have when you are managing a customer relationship so then let's look at the other things that you can also do if I right click on the business partner record you can see I've got additional information that I can store here I can you know duplicate a business partner I can remove a business partner I can create special prices for a business partner um, and so on and so forth let's move the screen just down here into the center a little bit um, what I can do here is you can come down here and you can click on the you can also option you can see these are the additional things that you can do and this is oftentimes where the CRM system brings these functions up as a different screen so you have to call up the screen first and then retrieve the customer record with SAP business one you still have that option but you can start from the customer record and then jump to that screen so if you want to see all the related service calls you simply choose it from here if you want to view the related activities you can simply choose it from here and you'll see it's now showing you all the activities that have been created with that business partner now the activities you can also go over here against activity you can open an activity you can create the activity and then you can link it to the business partner so you come across here you could do a lookup see all of your business partners and here they are here's all your business partners now by the way if I'm looking for a vendor I can just put V and you'll see because of my coding it's now bringing up all my vendors because I've decided that my business partner codes will begin with a C if they're customers and V if they're vendors all right so very very helpful functionality so again remember anything you can do with a customer you can do with a supplier there's that supplier relationship management so I can go ahead and I can create a phone call a meeting uh, a task all the traditional activities that we do when we're managing a customer relationship now you've also got the ability to define the different types 
of, um, of activity. So if I'm doing a phone call, I can say, well, these are the different phone call types that I've got. If I am doing a meeting, I can say, these are the different meeting types I've got, and so on. Then I can put in the subject. Now I can assign this to myself, and this, that's what I'm doing in this particular instance. I'm assigning it to a user. I can assign it to an employee, but a new feature in 9.3 is you can assign it to a list of people. So then people can pick these jobs, if you like, or these activities from a queue. Um, you know, So if you've got a shared group of telemarketing reps or whatever the case may be, they can go in and they can pull these activities out. Um, so you can assign it again, as I said, to a user or to an employee, depending on which kind of record you're using in SAP Business One. Um, you know, to manage these, uh, to manage these kinds of uh, re relationships with your customers. Remember, a user—that's who you sign in with—and an employee that can be actually a different code. Um, Although ideally with SAP Business One, your user code and your employee code should be a one-to-one -one match because Business One is named users in the licensing. But anyway, I can come across here into my business partner code and I can select that this is for a customer. And then I've got the ability with our golden arrows to drill down. So now I can start recording all that additional information uh, about the interaction with the customer. I can put in my um, remarks, I can put in you know, the address where the event took place. I can specify whether or not this is a recurring activity that I need to do on a regular basis. So this might be one of my better customers, so I wanna make sure I schedule a call to them on the, you know, on the first Monday of every month. So I can use that recurrence functionality to put that in there. Now the other thing I can also do is I can record this after the event has occurred or I can schedule this as an activity that needs to take place. And then of course, if it's an activity that needs to take place in the future, I can set a reminder for myself. And then when SAP Business One fires up its normal messages and alerts overview when I sign in of a morning, you'll see a list of all the activities that I have to do. And this will be one of those activities that's sitting there waiting for me to take action on. All right, so very, very nice and easy to do. The other thing is, when I'm creating an activity, I can also go in here and I can click the follow up button and that will then create a follow up activity that is automatically linked to this first activity. So you're very quickly and easily building that chain of activities uh, and seeing how they all tie together. Now you've also got your other details. You can tie this back to a resource. Maybe you had to use a resource uh, in SAP Business One to, to manage this activity. Maybe you use a conference room, maybe you use an activity like a, a meeting room or whatever the case may be. And you might have those set in here as resources. You might also have a pre-sales person um, set up inside SAP Business One as a resource. And you might flag that I've used one of my pre-sales people as a resource against this. You can also take this information. You can specify the activity type in here. Um, but you can also tie it back to a financial project. And for those of you who've already looked at our um, uh, project accounting and project management functionality in the 15 minute fundamentals on those particular areas of SAP Business One. You'll also know that you now have the ability to create projects in SAP Business One. Projects, sub projects and stages inside those projects. So the great thing about SAP Business One is that it really gives you the ability to link together all these different transactions and then build that bigger picture so that at any point in time, um, you can use uh, what's called the relationship maps, all right? And you can see um, how all these things tie together and you can quickly and easily use your right click button again and you can bring up the related activities. So you can say, show me the related activities. Now these are related activities for this business partner. Why? Because they are for this business partner. This activity isn't tied to any of these, but it is tied to the business partner. So that's why you see all these related activities, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. And then of course, from the related activities overview, you can create a new activity. So it really makes your life uh, very, very easy. Again, content is king, making sure you've got really good follow-up, really good note-taking about the activities that you're doing and when you're interacting with customers. You can record that content in here. And remember, if you're not sure how many characters you've got, take a look down here in the bottom left hand corner when I hover over this field you'll see it actually says that I've got up to 256,000 characters so I can 
can't exactly write war and peace, but I can certainly put in plenty of information there about what happened as, uh, during this meeting, for example. You've also got the ability to link it to a document. So you might have a quotation that's sitting in the system, or you might have a, a, a sales order. Let's say this meeting was following up on a, um, you know, a customer complaint about a sales order. You can tie the activities to those documents, and as you would expect, there's lots of different documents inside SAP Business One that you can tie this back to, even right back to your campaign management and tying it back to a campaign. So again, the key to this, it's not so much putting the data in, that's important. If the data isn't in there, you can't get it out. But the key to this is being able to get this data out. And you can report on this, you can write queries on it, uh, you can get access to all that information very, very quickly and easily. So when we say that, you know, with SAP Business One, CRM is everywhere, we really mean it. And sometimes that functionality can appear to be a little bit hidden. So again, remember your right click field or your right click button on your mouse is your friend because it's gonna unlock that additional information. But always take a look um, at what is sitting underneath some of these drop downs because um, you will often find things that you didn't realize were there. Because let's face it, not everybody has the time to read manuals or the business one to go. Hopefully you do have time to watch these videos and we will give you some of these hints and tips. But uh, again, anywhere where you see something like that, Go into your sample data, take a look around, have a look at these different screens and see what's there. Another one you've got is your attachments. And this is where you have the ability to attach additional documents. Maybe, you know, there was a contract document which was shared, so you want to attach that. Maybe, you know, you've got meeting notes which you hand wrote out in Evernote or something like that on your tablet, and you want to attach those. You can certainly do that here, a PDF document, whatever the case may be. You simply browse out to where your attachments are, select the attachment that you want, and bang, add it in and you're good to go. And then when you're finished, you can click on add. And of course, now that that um, activity is there, you can come back in at any time and you can um, uh, update it. So for example, uh, if I go and I look at my last activity, there it is. That's the activity I was just doing. Uh, and you can see now I've got the ability to mark this activity as being tentative, inactive, or closed. So, you know, I can go in here and say, well, actually, this activity is now inactive, or you could say it's now closed, all right, in which case it gives you the ability to really use Business One as a productivity management system as well, so that you've got the ability to report on, you know, all your activities, all your open activities, all your closed activities. And then if you if you want to, you can start again using that query functionality and building queries that will show you, you know, how long it takes you on average to close an activity. Okay, activity was open on such and such a day. How, what, it was closed on such and such a day. How long did it take for that time to elapse? All right, so you're really only limited by, um, you know, your, your ability to define what you want to see. Because of course, with SAP Business One, particularly if you're running on HANA, um, you've got lots of capabilities there from a querying functionality, but but even on standard SAP Business One with Microsoft SQL, you've got the query manager, the data is there inside the tables, you can get to it and you can build those queries yourself. Okay, so it's a managed uh, dream if you like, because you have access to all that information there. And of course, don't forget, you've got your um, user-defined fields. So again, if you have additional information that you can't fit, uh, you can add a user-defined field to this, to the activities, and then have those user-defined fields pop up on the side here, just the same as you can with your business partner master data, for example. Here's my user-defined fields. I don't have any in here at the moment, but it still gives me the ability to pop up that screen on the side, which of course I can uh, I can tuck away. Now, this um, has these additional things like the analytics, for example, because right now I am running on SAP Business One version for HANA, but I'm just using the normal style user interface. So this is exactly what it looks like on SQL Server, and all the functionality we're talking about here is exactly the same on SQL Server. Hopefully that makes sense. So there you have uh, that, that, that core functionality that's there against the business partner, the activities that you can do. Um, again, let's come up here into our CRM. You've then got all of the information around managing your opportunities. So when you create uh, a, a business partner, doesn't matter whether it's a lead, a supplier, or a customer, 
you can create sales opportunities against them and you can use those opportunities to track and forecast your your sales activity and again let's face it salesforce automation is one of the core components of any crm system and this is one of the most underutilized areas of sap business one i'm not quite sure why it is i can only suspect it's because potentially people don't necessarily know that this functionality is there but it's basically giving you everything you need to do your fundamental Salesforce automation and opportunity management. And if you're using the SAP Business One mobile apps, you can access this functionality from the mobile app. So you've got reps on the road, they can have access to this information, not only from the SAP mobile apps, but from uh, some complementary solution provider mobile apps for SAP Business One, like Enterprise, for example. Um, but anyway, you can create an opportunity. I'm going to call up an existing one right now. So here's an opportunity I've got. Now, this opportunity, not only do I have a sales opportunity and it's still open, but I've also got the ability to track how much I've invoiced against that opportunity. So not only can you see your predicted sales, you've got the ability to then map your actual sales back to those predicted opportunities. So again, giving you a lot of functionality and a lot of flexibility there to actually track how well your sales force is performing. And for you as an individual sales rep watching this, gives you the ability for you to manage your sales opportunities exceptionally well um, and with quite a lot of detail. Um, maybe a little bit more detail than you maybe want your managers to see, but again, uh, I think you know at the end of the day, the key these days is really all about transparency, uh, and that's what everybody's looking for inside organisations. Um, and it also means that come forecast time, when you have to have your sales meeting, you don't have to sit there pulling information together. You can generate an opportunity status report out of SAP Business One, and you're ready for the sales meeting. Or of course your manager can generate that and leave you to focus on being out there in front of customers. Okay, so here's my opportunity. I've got my predicted closing date, my potential amount. I can give it a weighting. Now the weighting, um, this comes down to how you want to run your forecasting. Me, I'm a binary guy. I either think an opportunity is either going to win, you're going to win it, or you're going to lose it. So, you know, for me, weighted forecasts don't necessarily mean a heck of a lot. But again, with SAP Business One, the software doesn't make an assumption that that's the way you want to do it. So it gives you the ability to put in these weightings and then do weighted forecasts. All right. You've also got the ability to specify these interest ranges. So you can say they're low, medium, high, whatever the case may be. And then, of course, oh, there we go. I've got my reminder notice for my meeting has just popped up. Okay, remember that meeting I created just before? It's reminding me now that that's coming up and I've got to do something with it. Okay, so nice that that's popped up in the middle of our, uh, in the middle of our little training tip session here. Um, so again, um, I've got this, uh, this, all this information that's, that's available in here for me. I've got my general information. Now this is handy because if I'm working with a distributor, for example, so I might be a manufacturer um, but my product is actually sold through distributors. So I'm gonna track a sales opportunity which came into me, but I've now allocated it to a distributor. So I can record here who is my distributor that I might've allocated that, um, that opportunity to, and then track that back. Same thing, I can also track it back to a project. Maybe I'm an engineering company and there's a big construction project and I've now got an opportunity against that construction project. Well, the construction project can go in here. Then I've got, you know, what was my information source? How did they find out about us? Um, what industry are they in and so on and so forth. And again, additional remarks and don't forget all of my related documents. Now at the moment, I don't have any related documents for this particular, um, for this particular opportunity. All right, so that's why it's just giving me that little message down the bottom there. I can also track the opportunity as it moves through these stages. Um, and there's a good chance that potentially when the software was being sold to you, 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 you were shown some of these things, but maybe you've forgotten about it. All these stages are completely user definable and you can map it back to your sales mechanism, whether you're using targeted account selling or strategic selling or, or whatever the case may be, you have total flexibility as to how you map that. And then this is where your weighting comes in. All right, so if my opportunity was $100,000 and right now I'm at this stage first meeting and my percentage likelihood is 20%, then the weighted value of this opportunity is gonna be $20,000, okay? So again, you can see here my potential amount, 88,888, so my weighted amount 
is 17777. But if I go in here and make that 100,000, again, this becomes 20,000. All right. Now then, I've got additional information that I can include here. And of course, I can make this screen a little bit bigger. And don't forget, you've also got the ability to go in here into your form settings and you can tailor these forms. So if there's too much information here or maybe there's a, additional information that's missing, um, you've got the ability to go and tailor that uh, to meet your requirements. But let's just leave that as it is for now. I'm gonna update that, all right, um, so that that change has now been made. Uh, but I'm also able to go in here and I can also nominate what partners I might be working with on this opportunity as well. Maybe I've got, um, you know, let's take that engineering company example maybe there's partners I'm working with who maybe there's an architect maybe there is a structural engineer um, maybe there's you know um, a design consultant I can put all those people in here and if they are business partners in my SAP business one system I can actually link them back and then of course who are my competitors and what's the threat level and then if unfortunately that competitor wins the deal um, you can flag it that they were um, the winning bidder uh, for the opportunity. So that then gives you the ability to do win-loss reporting. Uh, and then of course you've got your summary, is the opportunity open, won or lost? And then if I go ahead and flag it as lost, then I have to give it a reason. If I flag it as won, I can also give it a reason. You know, why did we win? Was it price? Was it product? Was it my superior skills as a salesperson? Whatever the case may be. Now, when I go in here, you'll notice, and I win it, I can then tie it back to um, the sales order. So I can say, I won the opportunity, and here's actually the sales order or the invoice that um, that was created off that opportunity. Again, end-to-end -end visibility over everything that's going on. Right, so far so good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, let's just close these screens down for a second. Now we're gonna dive in a little bit more into the marketing side of CRM. I'm gonna say I don't wanna save those changes, but hopefully you've seen how all those different components come together. Oh, and by the way, <clears throat> oh, and by the way, of course, all of your reporting is available here in your CRM reports. Your My Activities report, your Activities Overview, a list of inactive customers, a Campaigns list, and then you've got additional Opportunities reports. So, you know, Opportunities are really the key to any good Salesforce automation process. And all of your um, forecast reports are all available here for you, including stage analysis, where you can see how many deals have I got in stage one, stage two, stage three, how is my pipeline broken up? Uh, and you can even um, visualize that pipeline uh, even more accurately if you're using SAP Business One version for HANA. And you can tie that back to pushing the data out to Excel, for example, using pervasive analytics and, and really starting to get some nice looking visualizations of your, of, of your information. So even if the news is bad, you can make it look good. Um, but uh, again, it's kind of hard to make a bad looking opportunities report look good. But uh, anyway, you get what I mean. Um, well, hopefully you do. So that's our all of our reporting functionality. So let's look at campaigns. So the campaign functionality in SAP Business One, it's again, it's one of those things that often gets overlooked because what it does, it takes a campaign to a certain level, but then it stops. What do I mean by that? Well, you can create a campaign inside SAP Business One, and let's call up an existing campaign just for the sake of the exercise. So what I've got here is I have created a campaign, and I am going to do an email out to uh, a group of targeted business partners. Now, when I'm doing the campaign, I can specify my campaign type. Is it a web campaign, a, a campaign of meetings? Is it email campaign? <clears throat> is it a, a snail mail campaign? whatever the case may be. I can put in the start date, the end date. I can also define a target group here. So you'll see when I go into my target group, I have the ability to create these groups. Um, and then uh, when I create a group, I create a new group here, uh, you've got the ability to specify then other parameters against that group. But anyway, coming back here, you've also got um, the ability to then tag this, as I said, against certain business partners. You can tag it also against certain product items. 
you can target ag against some of those partners. Remember, ag against the sales opportunity, we had the option to record these partners. And then you can even attach your campaign assets back to this campaign itself. All right, now the beauty of this is, once you've got this information in here, it basically then becomes your centralized record. Now, a lot of people look at this campaign information, they go, well, that's really not enough information that we need to track. We wanna track our, you know, our, our budgeted spend and so on and so forth. Well, here's the thing. You can go in into your user-defined fields and you can add all those additional fields as user-defined fields and then track them. Okay, so with a, a very small amount of work, you can really start to um, make this campaign functionality sing. And this gives you the ability, as I said, to track those campaigns. Now, generating a campaign itself is quite simple as well. What SAP Business One gives you the ability to do is run this wizard, and with all of the wizards, you can uh, run it each time from scratch, or you can base the wizard on a previous campaign. I'm gonna create a new campaign here, and I'm gonna give this campaign a name. I'm gonna call it, uh, well, we're in May, so I'm gonna call it my May campaign. And I don't have any remarks about that, then I'll say next. All right, so there's my campaign, it's the May campaign. It's gonna be an email. It's going to go against my customers. I can pick my target group. Now again, remember, this is a way of, of, of identifying um, your groups against uh, against the campaign. So it's a quick and easy way to say, ah, yep, I know who that was targeted, uh, that, that campaign was targeted against. You can apply an owner to the campaign. So who's the person inside my marketing team, for example? And this is Maria Bridie. She is the person who owns this campaign. Campaign starting on the 23rd, and it's actually only gonna run until the end of the month, which happens to be Thursday the 31st. And that's it. Now, I've also got the ability to create these campaign templates, all right? Um, and these campaign templates uh, can be pulled in uh, and tied back against the campaign. I can then go ahead and say next. And now what I'm able to do is I'm able to specify which of my business partners do I want to run this campaign with? So if it was all my leads, I could go in here and I could say add, um, and I could say, all right, who do I wanna pick? Do I wanna pick my leads so I can go from L, let me do that again, from L1 to, at the moment I've actually only got two leads here in my sample data, but I can go to L2, all right? And then I can say okay, and now it will add in all of those leads into the system. All right, so these are the, all the targeted business partners that I'm going to run this campaign against. Now I can go in here and I can import a list, an external list, and have that external list brought in um, into, my, into my campaign generation wizard. I'll then say next. So now what do I wanna do? Do I wanna save the campaign and exit? Save the campaign and execute it? And then if I'm gonna execute it, what do I wanna do? Do I wanna generate an external list? Send the email using Outlook? Send the email using the SAP Business One mailer? send a fax or generate a URL, okay, that um, each customer can go and link to, all right? Now, the thing to bear in mind with this, um, this is where kind of SAP Business One stops and your external marketing application kicks in. Once you generate your external list, you then push that out to MailChimp or HubSpot or, or you know, uh, SAP Hybris CRM or C4C, um, Cloud for Customer, the SAP Hybris product, if you're using that. But bottom line is you you push that list out to that external mailing engine because Business One, even though you can send out the emails, it doesn't track bounces, it doesn't track opt-outs, it doesn't do all of those kinds of things unless you're using a third-party mailing system. All right, so important point, um, that's kind of where the campaign generation functionality begins and ends. And for a lot of organizations, that's all they need. I just wanna generate a list outside of SA, uh, inside of SAP Business One and then execute the campaign through my marketing engine and then we'll run it through there. And when I get an opportunity, guess what? I come back in, I create the opportunity and as you saw on the opportunity screen, we can tie the opportunity back to the campaign. 
So that's kind of it. That's pretty much all the functionality that I wanted to show you in the CRM um, for now. Uh, again, there are detailed reports that you can, uh, you can drill down into, but they're fairly self-explanatory as most of the reports inside SAP Business One are. Uh, let's just take a look at one for example. If I go into my opportunity report and I look at my opportunity forecast report, you'll see it's the standard process. You generate your parameters. What do I want to see in the report? How do I want to group it? And then you generate the report. But of course, you have the ability once you've executed the report to then go and edit it, edit the layout and so on and so forth using Crystal Reports or the Print Layout Designer, depending on um, how that report is built inside SAP Business One. So hopefully that makes sense. If you've got any questions about the CRM functionality in SAP Business One, please jump onto the ASUG One Source Q&A area. I'd be more than happy to help you out. That wraps things up. I look forward to seeing you in the next of our 15-minute fundamental series.